Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 World uh, video uh, which today will be about the ST-Link device in more specifically my homemade ST-Link device. Now the first STM, I've, I've, I was doing some work on, on ESP32 and even used Arduino back in the day uh, and, and others. Uh, but the first STM32 project that I made was actually my own uh, STM32. I bought a blue pill board and I found out it was buggy. It didn't contain the right uh, MCU. So uh, it was a clone MCU and it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. <clears throat> so I decided to make my own. And the green pill board is the same processor. It's the STM32F103CB. Um, with an 8 megahertz crystal and uh, and the real-time clock crystal as well and uh, did it have a us it had a usb-c port uh, that was one of the differences and the i mean it was largely compatible with it was at least firmware compatible with a blue pill board uh, but it had a slightly different header. I think I modeled the header after the black pill board, uh, which have the same number of pins, so they are largely, but uh, they, never mind that. But shortly after I made this uh, green pill board, which was my first uh, board PCB with an STM32, I decided that I, at the time I was using these, let me go big, there, these uh, Chinese clone uh, ST Link, and I realized quite quickly that they have some limitations that I didn't like. Uh, but I also had one of the original ST Link, uh, the big white box, I don't have it near me, but uh, I disliked that one hugely because it didn't have any silk screen, it didn't have any label on the box so you always had to look up which pins were what and there were a lot of them uh, so I, I gave up on that one pretty quickly. I then started using these um, Chinese clone ones which run not bad really I, I but they have some missing features that you find on the newer ST-Link so I decided, I nearly dropped in my coffee, I decided to make my own ST-Link. And if you have been watching these videos, particularly the ones where I use the black pill board, uh, where I have made quite a lot of videos, I'm always using my own programmer, which is uh, documented. Uh, let me go there. It is documented extensively on the wiki page. Uh, it has gone through uh, a number of iterations and you can see them here with the Chinese clone. And uh, like, first, let me get one thing out of the way. Why does this one look the way it does? Why did I decide to do use that form factor? Well, the general idea was at the time I could buy these Chinese clones. I could buy them for less than a dollar, uh, I think. 80 cents or something like that for one of these and this one has been decided so it will actually fit into that uh, aluminium sleeve that they're using for that one however i never really used that feature because uh, uh, the the silk screen which was what it's all about uh, is different on the chinese clone and mine because i have svo port i have uh, a serial port uh, on the header, so I actually had the sill screen printed on the back of the board, uh, and that went okay. Uh, and and that is pretty much the story of this. But that form factor was also the reason why I never considered actually making these and selling them. Uh, which and and I had a number of requests for that, uh, but the problem is that that header would have to be hand soldered and the uh, USB A connector I'm using will also have to be hand soldered. So I pretty much gave up ever. I, I've been using them myself and I like them a lot and they never let me down. And 
that's it. But I never really considered uh, whether they could be com coming up for sale. The other problem I would have if I was selling something like this was that mm, I can't really call it an ST link because that is a ST microelectronic uh, thing and they wouldn't be happy about that, understandably. Uh, so I just call it an STM32 programmer. It it acts like an it can act like an ST link. Uh, I made a couple of videos about this. How to flash? Uh, there is, by the way, a picture of the big uh, ST link device I have. But I also made a video about flashing different firmware in this board. Uh, and it can actually, one of the interesting thing is it can actually run as a so-called black magic. Uh, there is an open source uh, firmware for this called black magic, which mm, is actually really nice. It runs uh, the GDB inside the chip. So it's actually a quite clever device. And if I were to sell these. I would not sell them as ST-Link. I would sell them as a Blackmagic probe with uh, that firmware loaded in. Um, and and that is about it. Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about this and there is a lot of people who, who are stuck with these Chinese knockoff uh, devices and maybe would like something a little bit better, which could be this device. So I decided to have a look at how could this be improved. The original project in uh, with, with the hardware uh, KiCad uh, files for this has been around on GitHub in my account for a long, long time. Let's see, we have it here, uh, ST-Link, uh, and the project is there. Uh, it probably couldn't be produced right now because uh, some of the components I use on this one might no longer be available on GLC PCB, for example, but you could certainly get them and you could certainly make a copy of this one. Uh, I am quite sure, knowing myself, there will be some tags. Here you have the different revisions I've gone through, so you can just pick one and you could actually produce these and the production files I guarantee are in the GitHub repository, but on the PCB. Uh, but I decided to uh, try to make a new one, which uh, sort of goes around the problems I had with this one. So the uh, requirements for the new one, at least in my head, would be I use USB-C pretty much for everything. So give up this stupid uh, USB-A connector. And this idea about putting the IDC header on the end of the board, <coughs> that's a silly idea because it requires hand soldering. And it is actually quite hard to solder because the PCB thickness doesn't match the distance between the pins over here. So uh, silly idea and need to get around that apart from that and i mean i would <clears throat> maybe like it to look a bit better but let's get back to that so uh let's look at my kicad files for this so what changes have i made this is the new one this is the programmer 2 uh, revision 8 it hasn't been produced yet um and let's look at the primary change in this is up here where I'm actually now using a USB-C uh, connector with the appropriate CC1 and CC2 pull down uh, and the reset circuitry, uh, the renumeration uh, circuitry from the ST-Link, which is, uh, and yeah, it, I, I don't think this is necessary, but let's not dive into that. It, it can most certainly work. Um, it's got, uh, I switched the, the, the LDO, uh, the power supply, to a beefier one. Uh, on this one, there is uh, the small, I can't remember the model number actually, uh, but it can deliver about 100 milliamps. But if you're actually driving a target board, this one can easily go up to the 500 milliamps that you can typically get out of a, 
a USB port, uh, it would actually, that one would go up to a whole amp if you want to. So I'm using the standard AMS1117 in a 3.3 volt version and it works, uh, it, it'll work fine. I have some decoupling capacitors. I switched the programming pins. This was originally a bunch of test points, uh, but I switched that to a true hole, uh, but I don't put the header in uh, from the factory, hence the X, but it will be a standard uh, 100 mil header uh, that can be used. And that means that for flashing these, when you get a new one, you can basically just hold a pin in and hold it there and then flash and you're done with it. You only need to flash the bootloader once, then you're done and you can do the rest via the USB. Uh, the MCU, there's no triggery here. Uh, this is exactly, let's go back here. We have the, this one, it, it is essentially following the original ST link, uh, which is also compatible with the Black Pill board. Uh, so the Black Pill firmware has been developed for this. So, and STM kindly decided to make this uh, schematic public. I don't know if they've done that with the new ones, but I might look into that later. Uh, so this one pretty much follows this with one, I think, exception, and that I find it irritating. So the original ST link have the possibility of looking at the target power and measure that the voltage is correct before you flash. And it does that by taking the voltage of the power and dividing that to a voltage divisor and then divider and then into an analog pin input uh, ADC uh, input pin. Uh, I never really used that feature, so I made a solder jumper, which is default, just shorted up to its own 3.34 supply, so that will always come out correctly. Uh, the target header is exactly the same as the first version, uh, with the difference that I am now using. No, there is no difference in this. So let's look at the PCB, how I decided to do this. And as you can see, I have made it considerable bigger, but still quite small and flexible. So it's about 44 millimeters times 33 millimeters. Uh, why exactly it came up to that size? It's, uh, I probably used a pair of units, units for the actual sizing, but I don't remember why I decided. And over here, we will have the USB C here we have the programming header. Uh, bah, bah. Uh. And as you can see over here, I have used the IDC, uh, not a true hole one. I have used an SMD version of the IDC header, which I'm using here. The idea being that the JLC PCB will be able to assemble this 100%, so I don't have to hand solder anything, which I like. Uh, I don't mind soldering, but I don't like soldering a lot because my eyesight is not as good as it was when I was 20. So uh, let me see. I also uh, did something I think is a little bit clever when it comes to the design of this. Rather than making a case for this, uh, now I'm not big on 3D printer, I actually have a 3D printer, but I've never been very successful with it, uh, so I don't like to 3D print, and so rather than making a case for this, I came up with this idea, so let's look at this 3D, so I simply make a, another PCB with no components on it, but the sill screen, and this will be mounted, there will be a hole that fits that uh, IDC header exactly. It will have the sill screen next to the pins in the right order. And uh, if we look down at the programming header will be accessible from the back. And the distance, the idea is you put some, uh, some of those uh, vinyl uh, standoffs or spaces, uh, and I reckon about uh, six millimeter. So there will be a six millimeter spacer in each corner, and I'll just use those vinyl ones and a vinyl screw in on each side, uh, or maybe a 
not on one side. Uh, I uh, that can be figured out later. But vinyl spacer in the, or standoff in each corner, and then you will have a pretty cool looking product. Uh, I will probably make them in black. Uh, but it may end up being green. I don't really care much about that. Uh, so that is the idea. Um, so, and this is kind of ready for ordering. Uh, I haven't ordered it yet, uh, but it is ready for ordering and uh, they, uh, they could be produced quite easily. And uh, well, yeah, so as usual, uh, please do like and subscribe down below. It means everything for a channel like mine. The more likes I get, the more viewers, the more YouTube recommend the videos to others. So please do like and subscribe. Uh, and um, actually, I would like to hear in your comments if you would be interested in buying one of these if I could manage to find. There is a couple of challenges uh, for selling these. Now, I live in uh, Malaysia and shipping out of Malaysia at the moment is actually really expensive. Uh, and I, so while I could receive them cheaply from China, I will need to find a way to ship these uh, that doesn't uh, break the bank or make the product too expensive. Um, so what I'm looking into is whether I could find a, a somebody in China who will actually receive these and then send them individually straight out of China. That would be the ideal uh, solution for me. So I don't need to see them here. Uh, but that also means that, that need, the device needs to be flashed with the black magic firmware directly from the factory. Uh, so there are some challenges to be solved. Uh, Price-wise um, is another issue because these buggers are really, really cheap. They are, uh, I, I think by now it's about a dollar twenty or something like that at the moment, <coughs> and um, it, it's impossible for me to get anywhere near that price. Uh, I think I could probably end up selling this. It'll be. Uh, it would be closer to 15 to 20 dollar if i wanted to sell still cheaper than a new st link uh, original but uh, much more expensive than the chinese knockoffs uh, so i don't know if anybody would be interested in paying this it works really really well i've been using it every day for the last five years and uh, i never had a problem with it so uh, and it is really nice uh, feature that you have the SVO pin, uh, so you can debug through that, and you even have a serial UART. And this works, by the way, with Black Pill, Black Magic firmware, but it also works if you decide to break the law and flash STs firmware on this device. Which um, I can't stop you from doing that. And <laughs> nor do I want to do it uh, and I honestly don't think ST will have a huge problem with that if people buy their MCUs so that is kind of all uh, I wanted to say about this um, just a little uh, rant about the history of my own uh, devices and why they ended up looking like that and why I figured out that might not have been the best idea in the world. And that's how development often goes. I think this one would be much, much better. And I am absolutely convinced that if I make this, which I'm quite sure I will, uh, it will um, it'll be much, much better. And I'll probably jungle all the other ones uh, because they're not really needed. This one will work very, very nicely. That is about it. Uh, as I mentioned before, please like and subscribe. And as usual, have a wonderful rest of the day.